So now we will see data types in JavaScript. So guys, basically JavaScript has eight data types. As you can see, the first data type is a string data type that we have already seen previously. Next, we have the number data type in which we can have the integers or the float numbers as well, along with the decimal point. Apart from this, we also have the big int data type, in which case if any of the values cannot be represented by the number, such as the very big numbers, then we can use the big int data type over here. Apart from this, we also have have the boolean data type which is having only two values that is true and false and then we also have the undefined data type followed by the null data type and then we have the symbol and the object data types as well so guys let us check this with the help of examples in vs code over here so first of all we will see how we can define the variable with the string data type so over here we will provide the variable name as str and as we have discussed previously whatever value we provide in between the double quotes or the single quote or the back tick as well those values are represented as a string in javascript so guys over here let us provide programming for beginners that is the name of this youtube channel which you should definitely subscribe if you have not done so so basically we have this value as the string data type over here so the str variable is now of the data type string in this case based on the value that we have provided so let us confirm that as well we will simply provide the type of character inside the console.log statement and then we will provide the variable name apart from this we also want to print the variable value so simply we will say back text and then inside this we will say value of str is and then followed by dollar and then inside the open and close curly braces we will provide the name of the variable that is str in this case so guys let me just save this file now and try running this code on the terminal so we will say node followed by the name of the javascript file that is test.js over here so as you can see we are getting the string as the output for this type of operator when we check the data type of this particular variable so basically the str variable is of the string data type over here apart from this the value of str is programming for beginners so you can see that this is the string that is getting printed over here so guys in this way this is the first data type that you can use in javascript apart from this when you say number basically on the right hand side you only have to provide the value of the number over here so let's say we provide the value as 10 in this case so guys basically since we are not using any double quotes or single quote over here based on the value of the variable the data type will be assigned to this particular variable so now str will be having the data type of number so let us check that as well so over here we will also provide the string so that we can understand that this is the data type over here so guys basically we have data type followed by colon and then we are using the plus operator and then we are using the type of operator in order to get the data type of this particular variable let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here as you can see now the data type it is equal to number this time that's because we have provided the value as number over here and the value of str is 10 so guys basically we have not changed the variable name over here but we are simply changing the value so based on the value of the variable the data type will be assigned to that particular variable let us say we provide certain decimal point over here and after that we provide the number that is 35 which means 10 dot 35 is the number so basically this is the float number which belongs to the number data type over here when we save this file now and try running this code once again over here as you can see data type it is equal to number again and the value of str it is 10.35 so guys whether it is integers or the floating point numbers with the decimal point all those numbers will belong to the number data type and based on your requirements you can provide the values for these variables now guys apart from this how do we define the big int over here so let us say we have a very big number in this case so let me just print a very big number over here so as you can see we have a very big number on the right hand side so let us see how this number will be printed on the console there is certain warning that is coming over here numeric literals with absolute values equal to 2 raised to the power of 53 or greater are too large to be represented accurately as integers. So guys basically it is giving us certain kind of information over here that this is belonging to a big integer but still let us see how the number will be printed on the console. So let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here. So as you can see the data type is still number because we are not using the big integer over here in order to convert this particular value into a big integer. So basically the data type is number 
and the value of this str it is 1.23 and so on basically e raised to the power of 30 is being used over here in order to represent the number but guys let us say you want to print this exact number on the terminal so what you can do is simply you can use the big int over here so basically this is the class that is big int that you have to use and when you use this you need to provide the data inside the double quotes which needs to be enclosed between the open and close parenthesis over here so as you can see we have the big end and then we have the open parenthesis followed by the double quotes and then the entire number that is present inside this double quote and then we have the closed parenthesis over here so let me just save this file now and let us see what will be the output over here on the terminal so as you can see we are getting the data type it is equal to big end over here and the value of str it is the big number that we have already provided in our code in this case so guys basically if you want to use this big number and want to represent it as the big int over here you can use this big int prefix over here and then you need to enclose this entire number within the parenthesis now guys apart from this you can also use the boolean data type as well so basically it is going to have either true or false value so when we say true in this case it is a keyword that is reserved by javascript over here so let me just save this file now let us see the data type and the value of this true value so as you can see we have the data type as boolean and the value of str is true now similarly we can also provide the value as false over here let me just save this file now again the data type will be boolean this time and that is how you can either use the true or false values for the boolean data type it becomes very important to use the boolean data type whenever you are using the conditional statements we also have something called as undefined data type so let us say you have not provided any value to this particular variable so simply we will provide semicolon over here and we are getting the error const declarations must be initialized so guys basically let us change this to the let keyword so that we want to test the undefined data type over here so basically we have not provided any value this time so guys by default when there is no value that is assigned to this particular variable the data type of this variable will be undefined over here and the value will be also undefined so let us check that as well let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here as you can see the data type it is equal to undefined and also the value that we have provided for the str variable is undefined over here so basically the meaning of undefined is we have not provided any value to the variable yet and it will have certain value in future based on the calculations that we are going to do based on the calculations or the expressions that we are going to use along with this particular variable now guys apart from this we also have something called as null over here so we can simply provide the null value over here so let us see what will be the output so basically on the right hand side we have provided the null value for this particular variable let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here so as you can see the data type it is equal to object for this particular null value and the value of str it is null so guys in this way you can use the null value as well for a particular variable there is another data type that is symbol which we are going to see in the upcoming videos as well and another very important data type is object in which there are multiple other data types that we can define such as array and then map set date promises and also the custom objects that we are going to create in the upcoming videos so guys basically all these data types belong to the main data type that is object over here so how do we define an array so basically array is nothing but the list of elements the list can be of the integer that is the number data type or it can be of the string data type as well or it can also be the big integers as well so in short it is going to be the list of all the elements that we are going to define inside the array so guys how do we define the array over here simply we declare the variable over here and then after the equal to operator inside the open and close square brackets we need to provide the list of all the elements so let's say the first element is one over here we want to define the list of numbers in this case followed by comma and then we have to provide the second element that is two in this case and then followed by comma then three four and so on so guys basically whatever number of elements you provide over here those elements must be separated by using the comma in this case and in this way you can define the array that is the list of elements which will be of the data type object over here so guys as you can see we have five number of elements over here let us see what will be the output for the data type and the value of this variable so let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here 
as you can see data type it is equal to object this time because arrays are of the data type object in javascript and then apart from this we can also get the value of str it is 1 2 3 4 5 now guys apart from this we can also provide the list of strings over here so let us say we want to provide the list of fruits in this case so simply we will provide the variable name as fruits over here and instead of having the str variable in the console.log statement we have provided the variable name as fruits now guys over here let us say the first fruit is apple over here then followed by comma and then the second fruit is mango and so on we can provide the values of other fruits as well so we have watermelon as the third fruit and then let us say we have another fruit that is orange over here so guys basically it is nothing but the list of fruits that we have defined inside the open and close square brackets over here which is nothing but the array in javascript now guys let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here as you can see we have the data type it is equal to object once again and the value of str which means the value of fruits over here you can see that the value is apple mango watermelon and orange so guys over here we have the value of fruits that we have already defined in our code so guys in this way the arrays are nothing but the of the data type object over here apart from this we can also define the date as well so we can get the current date of the system so what we will do is let us say we define the date variable over here simply we need to use the new keyword in order to get the current date and then over here we need to make use of this date class in this case so guys after this we have to use the open and close parenthesis so guys in this way we can get the current date of the system so over here what we will do is we will replace the variable name that is fruits by date over here so simply we have value of date and then the date will be displayed let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here as you can see the data type of date is object once again and the value of date is so and so that is getting displayed over here apart from this we can simply get the hours as well so currently it is 16 53 over here so the r is 16 in this case so simply for this date variable we can provide dot and then as you can see we have multiple other methods that you can use basically you can simply get the date as well and then we have the day then we have the full year then we have hours milliseconds minutes and so on so over here we have the requirement of getting the hours in this case so we use this particular method followed by open and close parenthesis so guys it is important to note that whenever we are going to use the method over here we have to provide the open and close parenthesis in this case so let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here as you can see data type is object and the value of date which means the r is 16 over here we can simply get the date as well so we have the get date method so let me just save this file now so today's date is fourth over here and that is what is getting printed apart from this you can also print the month and the year as well so guys comment in the comment section below what will be the output if you provide the date dot get full year over here let us see whether your answer is correct or not so guys based on the year in which you are going to execute this particular line of code you will get a different output on the console and the same you can comment in the comment section below please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to the channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well i'll see you in the next video in which we are going to see if and else conditional statements in javascript so stay tuned